Welcome everyone to Sunday in Harton and Caledon Park. Welcome to those of you in Harton and Caledon Park. Welcome to those of you who are watching from outside our community, but joining us in our community online. As we come to worship this weekend in faith and in hope and in love, we are joined as usual by voices from across both of our churches. This evening we are hearing from Emma Waters as she preaches for us and this is her not quite last but her almost last outing to share with us in worship before she begins her ordination training in September. So we will be uh, so sorry to see her go but so glad to pass her over into God's hands to begin her training to lead God's people elsewhere. This week we've also seen, I've also seen Elaine Gray who was on placement during her ordination training with us um, 18 months ago and she should have been ordained last month but has been licensed, licensed as a lay minister until September but she joined us for chapter on Tuesday which was lovely to see. We, uh, in our notices this weekend, we want to uh, include celebrations, so I have no idea where there are birthdays over this last week or so, or the coming week, but I do know that there are wedding anniversary celebrations, so we have been holding in prayer those three couples who have not been able to get married this weekend, but for those who already are married and have been married some time, there are celebrations. So. Anne and Bill Vincent have been away on holiday this week to celebrate their 30th anniversary and they still have way to go because Marjorie and Ian Clark are celebrating their golden wedding this weekend. So huge congratulations to all of you celebrating. I hope you've had a fabulous weekend. Uh, we are still online and we will remain online for worship and on the phone lines for worship as long as we need to do. But hopefully we will be back in the building, some of us at least, in our buildings on the 16th of August. So next week will be um, a kind of dry run for us to check that everything is in place and hopefully we will be back worshipping in the building um, in a small proportion of us on the 16th of August. So our paperwork is changing every time the government changes the rules and there's still more to go with the advent of mandatory face coverings next week in, in places of worship so we need to work through that um, but we are on the way to seeing ourselves back in church for worship and for the halls to be open again from uh, this coming week. Thank you so much for those of you who have contributed to worship and who will still contribute to worship as we go forward and a huge thank you for forbearance for those of you who have been itching to get back in the building. We have to make sure that it is safe for everyone and we want, we always said at the beginning that we want when we go back for us all to be there, we don't want there to be any spaces in the pews. It will feel slightly odd and there will be um, information in this coming month's magazine of how worship will look and maybe even some video clips and there'll be instructions for everybody but we will um, we'll work it out as we go and those of us who can get back in the building in the first instance will be able to still join here as we gather together online and um, in spirit to worship God who is our leader and our protector and our guide. We worship him in truth, we worship him in spirit and we worship him with praise. So welcome to worship. Do join us now and enjoy our worship tonight. Together, love me all together. Well. 
Welcome this evening to worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Let's pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come into God's presence, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you have all faith, but because you have some and would like to grow in it. Come because he loves you and waits to give you everything. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. So let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. In the wilderness, we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Make us clean hearts, O God, and renew right spirits within us. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. O Lamb of God, come cleanse our hearts and take our sins away. O Lamb of God, your grace impart and let our guilty fear depart. Have mercy, Lord, we pray. Have mercy, Lord, we pray. O Lamb of God, our lives restore, our guilty souls release. Into our lives your spirit pour and let us live forevermore in perfect heavenly peace. In perfect heavenly peace. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins and bring you to everlasting life through and in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So this week we pray. Lord God, your son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today, our first reading given to us by Michael Blagden. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 5. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. 
because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, and a light upon our path. Thy gospel read for us today by Diane Lee. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our reflection today by Emma Waters. The feeding of the five thousand is a well-known miracle performed by Jesus, and is the only one to be included in all four Gospels which speaks of its importance as it echoes the Eucharist and our mission in the world. It tells us that God cares about even our most basic needs, ones that we do not think to bring before him. The gathered crowd asked to be healed, not to be fed. It was disciples who noticed this need and brought it to Jesus' attention, thinking that he'd been too busy to notice such needs. This was not the case. He was waiting for them to notice, to have compassion and to act on it. And in response, he issues them a challenge. And it is one that echoes through the centuries. You give them something to eat. We are called to be people of love and initiative, to imagine the possibilities open to us if we have faith. We are called to feed God's people, both physically and spiritually. It tells us that all things are possible with and through God. It tells us that he will provide what we need and so much more. And when we, like the disciples, are faced with a seemingly impossible task, we must look at what we have, not what we don't, and bring it before God, and he will transform the humble into something life-giving. And perhaps the real miracle performed by Jesus that day was not the healing or the multiplying of food, 
but the way in which his presence has a transformative effect on the crowd. We know that it was late in the day. They were tired and hungry. The situation was quite precarious. And he simply asked them to sit. And they do. And they wait patiently while the flood was quietly shared by the disciples. There was no jostling or fear that they would not get what they needed. They weren't focused on their own needs, but had faith and trusted that he would provide. And I wonder how many of them, when they set off on their journey to follow his boat, thought that they would be part of something so amazing and life-giving. And what made them decide to follow Jesus? Was it simple curiosity, faith, a desire to know more, or because they wanted something? In some ways, it doesn't matter. What does is that they did. And before they set off, how did they decide what to take with them? Maybe some just left. Maybe some packed light, taking only the essentials. Maybe some even packed the kitchen sink. And I also wonder if they were grateful or lamented what they brought or didn't bring with them on their journey. Recently, a spare of the moment decision took me and my children to walk the last leg of Bede's Way to St Paul's. We knew we'd be out for the day, so we took a packed lunch, blankets, sun cream, first aid kit, and I even printed off the map of Bede's Way. <laughs> when we first went, it was exciting. They loved the walk, being amongst nature and exploring what they came across, checking the map as they went. There were a few nice surprises for them, things that they didn't expect to see. And then about halfway, we came to a bridge and it was blocked. It was no longer safe to cross. Now this elicited a few different responses. One was just let sit here and eat. Uh, this time it was half 11 and all that walking had obviously made them hungry and tired. So one of the response was to turn back a little way and just go to a field buy some ducks and horses to have the picnic day and make the best of it. And the other one was to continue and to look for another way to cross the river. After much discussion, we went with the latter. Yes, it added to our journey, but at least we, are, we were on our way again. It wasn't, as it turned out, very scenic. We were walking along roads, some really busy main roads. So at times it was a little scary and, and daunting and we weren't sure where we should go. We were at crossroads and we were scratching our heads. And it was at that moment that we got a nudge by a perfectly timed stranger riding past and he pointed us in the right direction. And it was with great relief and excitement at the thought of being able to eat and rest that we arrived at St Paul's. And we spent a few moments reflecting and praying and then went on to have lunch. Now this little snapshot of a journey holds many wider truths within it that we face as we journey. Sometimes we want to turn back when things get difficult. We are unsure and apprehensive about making a decision that may take us the wrong way. Sometimes our map is outdated or unclear. What do we do? It is in these moments we need to trust in God, for he will give us a nudge in the right direction, just like that perfectly timed stranger. The most important thing that we can do is to entrust the outcome in God's hands. All we need to do is keep putting one foot in front of the other and follow Jesus. Just like the people in the towns who set off on their journey, excited and apprehensive, 
at where it would take them and look at their outcome. We are all sitting on the threshold of something old and familiar and yet new and strange as we begin to come back together, at least physically. We need to have faith that this new journey we are embarking on will too lead us all to being transformed in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Let's together declare the faith we share. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is love. We praise God the Father, who created the universe and keeps it in being. He has made us his sons and daughters to share his joy, living together in justice and peace caring for his world and for each other. We proclaim Jesus Christ, God the Son, born of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became one of us, sharing our life and our death. He made known God's compassion and mercy, giving hope and declaring forgiveness of sin offering healing and wholeness to all. By his death on the cross and by his resurrection, he has triumphed over evil. Jesus is Lord of life and of all creation. We trust God, the Holy Spirit, who unites us to Christ and gives life to the church, who brings us to repentance and assures us of forgiveness. The Spirit guides us in our understanding of the Bible, renews us in the sacraments and calls us to serve God in the world. We rejoice in the gift of eternal life. We have sure and certain hope of resurrection through Christ and we look for his coming again to judge the world. Then all things 
will be made new. God is love. Our prayers today written for us by Jean Roberts. Jesus, the teacher, enables the ordinary unlearned people to understand God's wisdom, the eternal laws of his Father's kingdom. May the Spirit pray through us as we try to put into words the longings of our hearts for the church and the world. Father, we thank you for all who have helped us to pray and to grasp something of your great love and power. We ask your blessing and empowering for all who teach and minister in your name. So we pray for Emma as she looks forward to starting her ordination training, for Elaine as she begins her ministry among us. We give thanks for Brian and Stan's contributions to our services, to our worship and their continued ministry among us. We ask your blessing on all those who lead us in prayer and in praise, all who contribute in any way to our worship. We ask your blessing on those who serve you in our name and who serve others in yours. Make us the people you want us to be and guide us to do what you would have us do. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Father, we thank you for the beauty and diversity of the created world we inhabit. We ask for the wisdom to tend it carefully, respecting nature and sharing the resources, listening to the weak as well as the strident, the poor as well as the affluent and powerful. We pray for all who are suffering hardships or persecution, for all who are in peril or danger. We ask for an end to the war in Syria, for all refugees wandering lost in Europe, especially during this pandemic. Strengthen all who seek to bring in your kingdom by striving for peace, for justice, for liberty. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Father, we pray for our families, our friends, our neighbours and all who serve us in our community. For the joy of friendship, we pray for all with whom we share our daily lives and those we love but seldom see. For those who have been examples to us, and have taught us the faith. We pray for all who seek to pass on these riches in their homes and lives and in the community. We pray for courage at this difficult time to be able to go out, to mix with people, to attempt to return to some sort of normal life. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Father, we thank you for the advances in medical knowledge. We hope for the new treatments for many diseases, especially for this COVID-19. We pray for all involved in medical research and all whose lives are crippled or disadvantaged by illness, frailty or damage. Give strength to all who care for the sick. Give comfort and reassurance, healing, wholeness and peace to all who suffer. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. 
Father, we call to mind all those we have known and loved, who lived among us and who now have died, taking their place at your side, at your banquet. Among them we pray this week for George Carruthers, and we remember those whose year's mind falls at this time, particularly this week, the memory of Betty Nicholson. We ask that all who have joined you may know your mercy, the everlasting peace and joy of your heaven. And we pray for those who mourn. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayer. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and truth, your understanding and generosity. We acknowledge our total dependence on you and praise you for providing us with all we need. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pain and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot currently receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. Lord, in these days of uncertainty, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. God is love. Those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. May God make you strong in faith and in love. May he defend you on every side. May he guide you in truth and in peace. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. No
Time and harvest.